Michael Jackson, you know, want to look at him and see what he looks like. And he said he feels like an animal in a cage. Imprisoned by fame, Michael found it difficult to find friends he could trust. When you become that huge, that big, everybody is like a yes person for you. And everybody's there and everybody wants to be a part of you and everybody wants to know you and everybody wants to be your friend. You begin to think, well, who is my friend? Are you here because I'm this big? Or are you here because you like my personality, me for what I am? So you kind of wonder, and you turn more so to animals even more because they don't know that. They love you for who you are. They're not asking for anything, just love, just simple love. Rats, snakes, exotic birds weren't enough. Michael soon wanted a pet even more extreme. Nineteen eighty two was the year Michael Jackson's life and the pop world changed forever. His second solo album, Thriller, catapulted to number one and stayed at the top spot for an astounding thirty seven weeks. His ever escalating fame continued to exact its price, and Michael set his sights on a new and unconventional companion. My mother made a vow with all of us. She says, you can have whatever animal you want, but you can never have a monkey. Michael persisted, and slowly but surely, he convinced his mother. Bubbles was born in a research lab and later sold to Michael. Finally, it happened. A little chimp came, a little baby, so cute, so adorable. And he begged my mother if he could have it and begged her. And she says, I said no. And he says, please. And she finally gave in and says, okay. Having a relationship with a great ape would be unique from any other species of animal. They're so like us. You know, they have hands. They can hold on to you. They can kiss you. They are almost human. So having a relationship with a, with a chimp would have been a, his most special relationship with any animal. Bubbles became part of the Jackson family and was given all the privileges of a human child. Michael would dress him in Oshkosh Bigosh and all the different little designer clothes and things of that nature. He had his own nanny and he was just the sweetest politest thing that you could possibly ever ever imagine bubbles became a human he became one of us pretty soon bubbles made himself at home all the cooks in the house love bubbles bubbles you can stir the food mother goes don't you dare let him do this i don't want him preparing food for me bubbles ate at the family table and he ate just like we did with a knife and fork he has to have Tabasco in his food, and then he starts to eat it. And it was the cutest thing he knew what he wanted. He would open up the refrigerator in the freezer, go and get the haagen get a spoon, sit down, and start eating haagen it's, It was always the cutest thing. And when he's done, he just gets up and walks away. Michael and Bubbles became inseparable. Everywhere Michael was, Bubbles was there too, 24 hours a day. When it was bedtime, Michael would say, Bubbles, go put on your pajamas and go to bed. And Bubbles would go in the drawer, take his pajamas out, put them on, and then he would say, say your prayers. And he would get on his knees and say his prayer. And he would say, now get in the bed and go to bed. And then he'd jump in the bed, put the covers over him and go to sleep. An infant chimp would sleep in the mother's nest with the mother. Well, your bed is your nest when you're human. So uh, Michael was intuitively doing what was, what was right for Bubbles. Michael would have become a surrogate mother. He would have been getting a lot of love in return, and here was a creature who craved love and affection. He would have been able to form a very meaningful, intense, physical relationship with Bubbles. One morning, Michael called me. He goes, you gotta see this, you gotta see this. He mimics everything I do. I go, what do you mean? He goes, watch. So Michael's in the room, and he's brushing his teeth, and Bubbles looks up, and he gets a toothbrush, and he starts brushing his teeth. And Michael, this is the cutest part, Michael starts combing his hair, then Bubbles combs his hair, but he combs his arm. He's just combing his arm. I go, Michael, it's not even his head. He's combing his arm. He realized that's hair there, too. 
Michael felt so close to Bubbles that he wanted his friend to communicate with him. And he was determined to find a way. Michael had a fascination with science, anatomy, and anything that would help make it happen. He had a real brain come to the house and he had in a jar. It's a hero human brain. Where'd you get that from? Who gave you? He goes, Shh, don't tell mother. It was all part of Michael's master plan. Michael always wanted to know how can I make him speak and talk. And he wanted to find out. He wanted to give it vocal cords. He asked doctors, can I give it an operation? Can I give him vocal cords? Because I want to know what he's really, his thoughts are what he's really saying. Their larynx isn't positioned in the right place for speech. It's too high up in the throat. Although Bubbles would obviously never be able to talk, he still wasn't like any of Michael's other animals. I met you about two years ago, Bubbles, and you've had a lot of publicity in the meantime. You're still the same sweet old chimp that you always were? Same, got the same person? Don't do that. <laughs> Bubbles was about to become a pop icon, just like Michael. And with him, be at the mercy of the media. Along with Michael Jackson's meteoric fame came increased isolation. He would come to identify with other icons who shared similar experiences. Oliver was one of Michael's favorite musicals. He related with the rags to riches story of a young boy. British actor Mark Lester played the title role. Michael had a lot of friends, but few very close friends. So I was very honored to be one of Michael's close friends. Their families spent Christmases and holidays together, and Mark later became godfather to Michael's three children. As a trusted friend, Mark Lester had more than a casual glimpse of the real Michael Jackson. Well, Michael always told me that he was an illusionist. You know, he created this, this, this aura about himself. It was a smokescreen effect. In 1986, the tabloids ran a story claiming Jackson slept in a hyperbaric chamber to slow the aging process. Similar reports claimed he offered to buy the bones of the elephant man. Jackson did not deny the stories. Michael was very clever because his private life was not penetrated by the press, so he could serve up any illusion he liked, and, and, people, and the press went along with it, so he was quite happy with that. Could Bubbles have been just another way to gain more press attention? This happened to be a pet monkey, but for Michael it would have been part of the illusion because the press would have picked up on it, you know, man with best friend as a monkey, you know, and writing about it. So Michael would have thought, right, okay, dress him up, put him into a suit, and we'll continue with the illusion of that. So Michael would have played, played on that. Certainly it was different. And certainly it was eccentric, and to some people it might have been extreme. He really did enjoy the relationships that he had with his animals and found that fun and pleasure and security and safety. At the same time, though, knowing perhaps with a wink of his eye that it was going to draw some attention to himself in an unusual way. Whatever the real story, some in the media viewed Bubbles as the last straw in what seemed like Michael's increasing detachment from reality, which contributed to the tabloids labeling him Wacko Jacko. A moniker he understandably despised. A wacko jacko, where does that come from? I'm English tabloid. I have a heart and I have feelings. I feel that when you do that to me. It's not nice. Don't do it. I'm not a wacko. I think the British press and tabloids were very, very cruel. Uh, and, and they are to everybody. And in a way, some of maybe Michael's antics um, were taken in the wrong way. By, by some of the tabloids. You should not say he's an animal. He uh, should not say he's jackal. I'm not a jackal. I'm Jackson. His feelings may have been so hurt that he may have thought to himself, you want bad? I'll be bad. I'll be bad for you if you want. I'll be a weirdo. You want weird? You know, so that may have happened. Um, and then, of course, the press just fed off it all the more. Did it do him any harm? Still sold the most records of any pop star ever. So Michael always said, you know, the worst kind of publicity is no publicity. His name, face was always in the papers.
Even still, there comes a breaking point.